Hi everyone. Uh, today is Tuesday, February 16th, 2021, and I am Michelle Gamolia, the CEO here at Woodland Pond. Um, and I've got a daily update for all of you today, just to go over a few things. This is my normal usual Tuesday update. And uh, I'd just like to invite anyone that has any questions for me after this update uh, or comments to certainly reach out to me. Um, I will be in the office all day today at extension 5501 internally, uh, or if you're dialing from outside, it's 2565501, or you can always get me on email. So first and foremost, I just want to mention, uh, of course, we did have, uh, you know, the potential for a very significant ice storm uh, last evening. We avoided most of it, although we did experience, you know, a little bit of icing. It, it definitely could have been uh, much more significant. And I want to just take the moment to uh, remind all of you, uh, particularly in independent living, that it's very, very important that you have some access to battery powered light. So if you don't have uh, a lantern or um, a flashlight that has working batteries in it, please try to make that a priority and please make sure that you know where it is. Um, oftentimes we recommend that you store it in that cabinet under your sink, um, but it's really important that you have access to a battery powered light source. And uh, also um, that you're prepared to charge your cell phone uh, and keep that on in the event that we do experience a power outage. Um, those are the two best ways that we are gonna be able to communicate with you um, and to ensure that you have um, visibility through the, through the light source if we do experience a power outage at any time. Uh, the health center, for those that are uh, watching from the health center, um, is on emergency power uh, and the staff is prepared to uh, initiate emergency power um, uh, procedures if we do have a power outage. The community building, uh, likewise, uh, the public spaces, corridors, kitchen are also on emergency power. So uh, for the independent living folks, this is preparation for uh, a power outage in your home itself. So in between storms is a great time to um, either come down to Dedrick's and purchase a lantern or a flashlight if you don't have one um, or order one online or, or so forth or buy one at the store. Uh, we are now two or three days uh, post a very significant vaccination effort for second round vaccines uh, throughout campus. So uh, all of our independent living folks that had had vaccination have now had their second dose. Um, and we've definitely seen some side effects. We have uh, a list of about two dozen or so residents that did actually engage with Mary Jo or, or utilize Mary Jo's help um, over the weekend and into all the way through today uh, in, you know, checking in on them, um, taking temperatures, uh, assessing for side effects. That's an independent living. Uh, we have uh, had a couple of people actually that have been woozy and have, have had falls, uh, two that ended up having falls that uh, facilitated a, a transfer to the hospital. Um, one was very minor, required stitches, and the, the resident returned. Uh, the other, actually, um, the person was admitted, um, and it turns out there are some underlying health issues that are going on. So, uh, you know, we're definitely seeing that. But as of this morning, uh, what we are all generally hearing is that most of you are turning the corner. So uh, we're thrilled about that. And um, this is just such an, a significant milestone because now we can really start in earnest making our plans for um, resuming certain activities and in independent living. In the health center, we are hoping every single day that um, Governor Cuomo and the Department of Health really look at what opportunities uh, facilities that have high vaccination rates among residents uh, and, and our vaccinating staff are able to allow resuming certain activities. Um, right now, they have made no changes to the requirements uh, in terms of uh, whether or not folks are vaccinated or not, and then what we can do uh, more expansively, let's say in assisted living or skilled nursing. But we're very, very hopeful that at some point, um, the fact that we have got so many people vaccinated um, makes a difference in terms of what we are allowed to permit um, in the health center in terms of visiting and congregate activities. Uh, the, the most important thing is that we have got a huge jump on vaccination. So we're gonna be very well poised um, once the Department of Health 
if they do, and our fingers are crossed, um, start you know, uh, tying the numbers of vaccines to more expansive opportunities, we're in great shape. So thank you to everyone that has chosen to be vaccinated. Um, and uh, we will look at how this can impact the community every day as we go forward here now. Uh, on vaccinations, some of you in independent living that were vaccinated at the Institute for Family Health have received a paper that looks like this. And it uh, is asking for your new Medicare number. And so um, given the situation that happened last week and the uh, added awareness that we all have right now for fraud potential, um, and this is asking for your Medicare number, several of you brought your letters down uh, to the concierge today, which is great. That is a great fraud protection um, skills right there. Uh, I did contact Erica and these are in fact accurate. Um, and if, if uh, you did get this letter, please just call the number that's there and uh, you can go ahead and read them your Medicare number over the phone. Um, if you're for some reason uncomfortable with giving it to them over the phone, you can physically go to the Institute for Family Health down on the corner and give them your, your new Medicare number. Uh, or if you wish, you can um, bring your new Medicare card down to the concierge. We can scan it for you and send it over to Erica via email. So uh, great, great fraud detection skills. And uh, we will help you with anything that we need there to get them those Medicare numbers so that, uh, that the vaccines can get taken care of. Uh, we are now into day two of menu changes in independent living. And uh, I want to just mention that, um, you know, you all got my memo yesterday about how uh, we, we need to essentially be respectful of each other. And um, yes, absolutely bring complaints and concerns, um, preferably constructive criticism, as I said yesterday. Uh, but when we do so, especially now when everyone is really testy, from the pandemic. I know um, a number of folks were feeling a little bit lousy yesterday because of the vaccine. Um, it's really important for us to stop and think for a second about how our tone is coming across. And I need the reminder myself, and um, we all need it sometimes, um, but we all care about and respect each other more than you know having an interaction with somebody over a menu change um, that leaves them in tears. And so I very much appreciate everyone coming out and saying, you know, no one should act that way. Um, we should all just have a respectful way to um, give feedback and dialogue. So thank you for everyone that sent um, supportive emails back and messages to Ronnie and her team. Um, the rollout of the Bistro uh, offerings yesterday at lunchtime were a rousing success. Uh, Ronnie estimates they had about 40 of you come through. I'm hoping that many of you decide to go down and grab a burger, grab a custom made salad, grab a soup. Um, you have that opportunity at lunchtime starting at 1230. Um, you will select your items, take them with you when you leave. Um, dinner last night, Ronnie thinks there might've been a little bit of confusion because she only had about 10 people come through. Um, so if you have questions about how the menu works, you can certainly call concierge, uh, but the uh, bistro is open for dinner takeout, um, starting at 3.30, I think is the time. I'll have to double check that, but concierge could tell you. And, uh, you can get a uh, hot dinner entrees. You can get a custom made salad. Um, you can get some sides and some other things. So, um, it's a nice alternative to, a, you know, your packaged dinner. Uh, and Ronnie will definitely be going through some frequently asked questions tomorrow at our management Q&A, which is at 1.30. Um, Ronnie will also be going through tomorrow the availability of a um, computer, computer and, and smartphone-based application that is going to put the power of menu planning and nutrition content right into the hands of the residents. Um, this is an app called Bite, B-I-T-E. Um, and it's a partnership with Sodexo, and it basically takes our actual menu and um, provides for all of the components of any menu, the nutritional facts, um, and a, a whole bunch more content. So Ronnie's going to do a demonstration of that app tomorrow um, at our management Q&A, and then she's going to provide instructions as to how um, you can access that information. Once we have that app rolled out, um, with that nutrition content right at your fingertips. 
if you are not a user of a device that can allow you to get access and you still wish to have nutrition facts, we will come up with a way to provide those to you manually, um, whether it be that concierge prints them out for you or we put um, handouts, uh, you know, photocopies by the hostess station or whatever, um, but we will make those available to you. So um, nutrition facts will be back in your fingertips. Uh, we are doing lots of planning for um, exciting changes that are going to happen March 1st um, on campus, mainly in independent living related to, uh, you know, our progress with vaccination. So, um, you know, stay tuned on some things that you can expect to see coming back onto the calendar. Uh, that combined with what I think is going to be warmer weather coming pretty soon. It's supposed to be 48 degrees today. So, um, and it's definitely brighter outside. Um, you know, the spring is coming and um, I, I know I certainly am feeling extremely optimistic and I know that a lot of you are starting to feel that same level of optimism. So just stay tuned on some of that stuff. Uh, I talked about the fact that we have our um, management Q&A tomorrow and um, that is going to be at 1.30, as I mentioned. That is uh, going to be the new time for that particular uh, monthly uh, presentation. So if you would, and this worked out really well last, uh, last month, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns that you'd like us to cover tomorrow at the management Q&A, please send me an email um, and let me know what your question or comment or concern is. And then if you're not on uh, the computer, you can certainly call concierge. Um, and let them know what your question or comment is, and they will relay that to me. It worked out so well last time, and we were able to really address the issues that you all have on your mind. Um, so please keep those questions coming, uh, and you know we'll we'll do some good coverage uh, of of things uh, there uh, in, in that regard. Um, let's see, just a couple of things on uh, on fraud and fraud scams. Uh, we have become aware of a couple of things that are uh, either new and prevalent um, or you know, things that you can do uh, to protect yourselves or prevention. And I just would like to mention um, two things. So a number of you have reported getting phone calls from someone claiming to be Amazon. So Amazon being the online uh, sales repository. And these callers are calling and saying that we're calling from Amazon. Um, do you have, or did you make these purchases? Or you know, we've we've identified fraudulent activity on your Amazon account. Um, that is a scam. Amazon will not call you. Amazon does all communication about potential, uh, you know, questionable transactions via the account email account that you have on record with Amazon. So if you ever get a phone call from someone claiming to be Amazon. Click, hang up the phone. Don't take the call, just hang up on them. Uh, they will not call you. Uh, just you know, go ahead and hang up on them. Uh, the other thing that I would like all of you to think about, and I will be um, actually putting out a, a recommendation sheet on this in the next few days, but every single one of you that has a credit card um, has opportunity and, and online banking. So if you have a credit card and any kind of online banking, you do have access to added fraud protection procedures on your credit card and bank account um, if it's an online account. So what I would recommend strongly, very, very strongly, is pulling out of your wallet all of your credit cards um, that uh, you normally utilize and on the, on the back, there's an 800 number. I would strongly recommend that you call the 800 number and tell them that you would like information about what added fraud protection you can put uh, on that card. So for example, one of the most common things that you can uh, ask for them to do is to send you an alert anytime your credit card gets used. This would be a great way for you to know if someone has accessed your credit card fraudulently um, if all of a sudden it's the middle of the night and you get an, an alert that someone spent $300 at the local ice cream shop, um, knowing that in real time and being able to call them and say, oh no, I'm not getting ice cream right now, that's very powerful. But every credit card has some kind of fraud protection mechanisms that um, you can add. Uh, some of them automatically do them by default, but 
it's time very well spent for you to make it um, a priority to call on the back of all of those credit cards and uh, ask what additional fraud protection you can put on your cards. Same thing with online banking. You can call your online banks and find out, you know, what added protections can I put in place um, on this account to protect from fraud? And again, it's time very well spent. Um, if you are not comfortable doing that um, and you have a loved one or family member that can help you with that process, it's time you know, that you should spend together and do that. Um, Woodland Pond will continue to educate and um, you know, give you information about fraud risks, but we need you, all of you to take steps towards this as well. Um, so I am going to just put out some of those tips in a memo uh, this week so that you can think about some of the things that you can be doing to help yourself with, um, you know, protecting from fraud, uh, because we're all going to need to do it. Uh, I think that's about all that I needed to cover for today. Um, we are looking at potentially another snow event on uh, Thursday. They're looking at maybe three to seven inches. So, you know, look out for some information from us on that as we get closer towards the end of the week. And then, um, uh, you know, I'll be doing another update on Friday at noon. So again, if you need me, you know where to find me. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.